Welcome. No, the quiz today is not a joke, but I wanted to find an example to talk to you about GTO and preflop strategy. So what is to be done to build a preflop strategy? For every hand in every position, we just have to answer the three following questions. Shall we fold that hand or get involved? If we get into the pot, shall we open with a raise or by limping? meaning by calling the forced bet from the blinds. And if we raise, what is the optimal sizing? That's already where things can be tricky. GTO has no other boundaries than the rules of poker. So the best overall strategy might include to have 20 different opening size from any position 100 big blinds deep. Sometimes open limps, sometimes open raise, sometimes move all in, sometimes open to 10 or 20 big blinds. You get lost? Okay, so do I. To try to understand what it should be, we can see some simple examples. My first example would be the quiz of the day. We all know that it's correct to open with kings from under the gun in a full ring game, but why? So if you haven't answered it yet, please put the video on pause and try to do so. Okay, as crazy as it might sound, the correct answer is three to still the blinds. How comes? Well, when we are opening a pot, we are taking chips from our on stack that belong to us and put them at risk in the middle. In all the betting games, a risk should be compensated by a reward. And the only reward at that point, regardless of other players' strategy, is the money who is already in the pot. If No Limit All Them was played without blinds nor ante, then opening with kings would turn to be a terrible blunder. Opponents would have a very easy counter strategy, folding everything but aces and gambling with aces for the money we already put in the pot and with 80% equity. It's actually the same situation when we are playing satellites. For example, we are in a tournament which offering uh, 100 seats. We have a very comfortable stack. We are among the cheap leaders and there are 102 or 103 players left. So if we are just sitting out and fold any end, we are for sure to be qualified. This is another situation where opening with pocket kings would be a mistake. And for exactly the same reasons, we would risk chips for no rewards. So now we can simplify a bit our model. We just had proven that it's incorrect to open limp. Let's move on to a second quiz. Since we just had proven that our goal is to steal the blinds, why is it correct to open with pocket kings and wrong to do so? with 7 of Hertz, Juice of Clubs. Once again, put the video on pause. This one is a bit more difficult to answer and try to figure out by yourself. Okay, it's actually possible to build a range in which opening with that end would be profitable from under the gun. For example, the range including all the pocket aces, all the pocket kings, and this specific hand is such strong a range that nobody would be able to defend with queens against it. 
there are six combo of pocket aces and kings so 12 out of 13 time pocket queens would have 20 percent but it's also very easy to understand that this range can be optimal it can be a better range than for example aces kings and one combo of pocket queens adding such a hand is weakening our range and that's just the opposite of what should be done the way to maximize our profit in poker is to play as many hands as possible until it's no more profitable. So now we start to have an idea of why we should open that hand and not that one, but we won't be able to go further without talking about sizing. There are not two independent problems. There is a correlation between our opening range and the sizing. Let's see it through a very simple example. We are playing in a full ring game live and the dealer announces that it will be the last end of the night. We are a bit cocky and say, okay, this is the last end of the night. Whatever my hand will be, I will open raise it. Then another player says to us, okay, whatever my hand will be, then I will three bet you. Under those circumstances, our best sizing will greatly depend on the nature of our hand. If we get the old pocket aces, I suggest to open for half of our stack, and then villain would have to three bet us for all the stack, and we will be able to gamble against his range with 80% equity. On the opposite, if we get the old seven deuces of suit again, we should uh, just uh, open raise for the minimum and fall to his three bet. Concepts which apply for a hand are the same than those who apply for a range. So with our opening range under the gun, when we had open with aces or kings, we wish we would have open as big as possible. But when we are at the bottom of our range, we wish we had risk the minimum. We won't be able to defend that part of the range against three bet and if we get called we probably will lose money but if it's overall profitable we'll still want to open with those ends so we are actually facing two conflicting goals we want to stall the blinds as much as possible we want to be able to play as many hands as possible and in the other hand we are stealing blinds so we don't want to give them good odds I won't be able to go much further in this video, but for those of you who would like to dig deeper in the theory, this exact topic was discussed in the Mathematics of Broker. I think it's in chapter 19, but I don't have the book with me and I cannot confirm that. Chen and Ankenman conclude that it was probably wrong to split opening ranges, meaning from any position except the small blind from which we can limp we should open raise with the same sizing and they suggest to open mini raise from any position but the bottom in order to be able to open as wide as possible and once we are in the bottom we should open for more since now we don't have to fear anymore anybody floating us or tributing us with the position on us and what is remarkable is that uh, Poker Snowy, which once again just learned GTO by playing billions and billions hands against itself, had then found the same results. And again in 6max, Prefrop Advisor suggests to open for half pot. This is not exactly a mini raise, but very close, 2.25 big blinds raise. And if under the gun fold then we can check that middle position should also open for half pot and if middle position folds then the cutoff should also open for half pot and of course the button should open for more here it's pot 3.5 so i don't know who is proving who is right but it's nice to see there are converging strategy 
between theory and practical proof. Anyway, that will be the end of the video. So next week, we're going to try to see how big of a deal it is to play GTO preflop. Before leaving, I will give you something to think about. That might be the next quiz. I don't know yet. So from the cutoff, it's incorrect, according to Snowy, to open with 9-8 offsuit. I'm sure it's a mistake we all don't or still doing, but it's incorrect. And if we check on Preflop Advisor here in the Analysis tool, Snowy advises to open 100% with 9-8 suited. Why such a big difference? Knowing that uh, there is only 3% of chances to make a flush, why it's always incorrect to open with 9-8 off and always correct to do so with 9-8 suited. Stay tuned and see you next week. Bye bye. <music>